Hello, this is Scott, and this lecture in the Transgender Health series covers medical transitioning. This is a quote from H.H., a transgender male, who talks about his quality of life and how it's improved exponentially since starting hormone therapy. Hormone therapy can be divided into these basic categories. For male to female patients, it's primary estrogen therapy for feminizing features, but then also has anti-androgen therapies such as spironolactone and 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. This allows for lower doses of estrogen and uh, lower rates of side effects from supraphysiologic estrogen. Female to male patients have primary testosterone therapy for masculinization. Uh, use of progestin-only OCPs can control periods without unnecessary exposure to more estrogen. Puberty blockers are also part of hormone therapy for transgender patients, but will be covered in the pediatrics lecture. There are different methods to deliver hormones for transgender patients. Uh, there are oral estrogens, uh, originally ethenyl estradiol, however it was associated with increased risk of DVT, uh, so now estradiol valerate is preferred use. Uh, there are also intradermal estrogens, which are preferred for patients over the age of 40 for decreased first pass metabolism uh, and better metabolic profiles. Oral testosterone is available in Europe, but is, in, is associated with an increased liver injury risk due to first pass metabolism. Uh, and so is not available in the United States. Intradermal and intramuscular testosterone is the mainstay of treatment for transgender males and is administered weekly uh, or every two weeks. Testosterone undecanoate is a treatment for male hypogonadism that's administered every 12 weeks uh, and is used off-label for gender affirmation. Testopel are testosterone pellets that can be implanted in gluteal tissue that are solely absorbed over the course of six months. Uh, these patients will get generally get reimplanted every three to four months to maintain uh, preferred testosterone levels. The changes associated with hormone therapy can be divided into reversible, partially reversible, and irreversible changes. With estrogen therapy, transgender females can expect female fat redistribution and softening of the skin to be reversible, while breast development is partially reversible, often requiring mastectomy to remove the formed breast tissue. Irreversible changes include decreased testicular mass. However, many patients undergoing hormone therapy find that they don't care if the procedure or hormone treatment is irreversible. So many of these are desired. Female to male patients on testosterone therapy can expect male pattern body and facial hair, increase in muscle mass, and suppression of menstruation on testosterone therapy. These are all reversible. Irreversible changes include clitoral enlargement and deepening of the voice. Clitoral enlargement is very desirable for many transgender males as it can be used in metoidioplasty to create a neophallus. This is just an entire list of the expected changes for both transgender males and transgender females in hormone therapy and the expected timeline of um, when they can expect these changes to happen. Most will happen within a year. This shows the effects of antiandrogens and estrogen, including chest growth or in growth of breast tissue, uh, softening of the skin, uh, thinning beard growth, um, and decreased libido with a female fat redistribution. This shows the effects of testosterone, many irreversible, including male pattern baldness, deepened voice, facial and body hair growth, clitoral enlargement. Uh, with also reversible oiliness and acne, increased strength, some vaginal atrophy, uh, and some variable fat redistribution. There are medical risks associated with sex hormone therapy. Uh, the biggest one with estrogen is the risk of th thromboembolic disease. However, this risk has not really been stratified based off of age and patient characteristics. It's actually fairly unknown how much estrogen therapy actually contributes to risk of thromboembolic disease. As multiple studies have shown, this only increases risk in patients with family or personal histories of DVT or PE. There's also a risk of macroprolactinoma, um, but this is also disputed, with some providers not uh, monitoring prolactin levels, while other providers recommending monitoring prolactin levels. Currently, WPATH and the Endocrine Society both recommend falling prolactin levels for patients on estrogen therapy. Transgender males on testosterone have high risk of erythrocytosis. However, this is easily treated with, uh, with 
donation of blood or phlebotomy. Um, there's moderate risk of liver dysfunction. However, this is only really seen with oral testosterone. There's also a poorly characterized risk of cerebrovascular disease and coronary artery disease. However, studies have shown that there's no effect of long-term mortality uh, due to testosterone on um, heart disease. While on therapy, uh, people on testosterone should get a CBC every three months for the first year and one to two times per year after. Um, you can consider, consider discontinuing hem therapy for hemoglobin greater than 18.5 or hematocrit greater than 52%. However, this is easily treated through blood donation or phlebotomy or decreasing the testosterone dose. Most patients prefer to do blood donation or phlebotomy in order to treat their erythrocytosis rather than changing their testosterone dosing. As talked about, transaminitis is mostly seen with oral testosterone and is uh, very rarely seen in our patients on intradermal or intramuscular testosterone. Oral testosterone is not available in the United States for um, this reason. Coronary artery disease and cerebrovascular disease. Um, there's a theoretical increased risk due to changing of lipid levels. However, long-term studies show no increased risk of CV mortality. Um, but further research is needed. It may be that uh, transgender males have the same CVD risk mortality as cisgender males. Hypertension um, is associated with testosterone therapy um, and blood pressures can be treated as appropriate with um, antihypertensives. Obstructive sleep apnea is actually associated with testosterone therapy with many patients developing OSA on beginning testosterone. And if they stop testosterone, the OSA will actually spontaneously resolve. This should be talked about with patients, um, and patients on testosterone therapy should be monitored for sleep apnea. Uh, this is easily treatable with CPAP. Patients on estrogen um, have higher risk of venous thromboembolism, as talked about, um, but there's not really a significant increased risk of the VTE rate without pre-existing risk factors. Uh, it's not recommended to monitor D-dimer, and thrombophilia screening should be restricted to those with family history of VTE. Spironolactone, a commonly used anti-androgen agent, uh, has a risk for hyperkalemia, and electrolytes should be monitored closely when starting therapy um, and then annually um, after reaching steady state levels. Hyperprolactinemia um, is associated with estrogen therapy. However, um, the risk isn't well known. Um, guidelines are dissenting on actual risk and management. It'd be a pr reasonable to monitor prolactin levels. Uh, osteoporosis is associated with uh, transgender females who discontinue estrogen after orchiectomy. Um, this is because they don't have any nascent hormones to prevent osteoporosis and once they stop estrogen um, it's like the osteoporosis risk of a menopausal female who's cisgender. Both transgender men and women have decreased but not absent fertility while in hormone therapy. Uh, microscopic examination of testicles after orchiectomy of transgender women showed 21% maintained some level of spermatogenesis while 4% retained normal sperm production. Um, the effect of testosterone on fertility uh, for transgender males is unknown, uh, with one study showing PCOS morphology while another study showed normal cortical follicle distribution. Uh, testosterone itself suppresses ovulation, and there's a greatly decreased risk of pregnancy amongst transgender males. However, it's not zero. Uh, Long-term effects of testosterone on fertility for trans men, therefore, is fairly unknown due to these de dissenting um, pathology reports and um, effects on ovulation. However, patients, whether transgender male or transgender female, should be counseled on Although their risk of fertility is lower, they are still able to get pregnant or get someone else pregnant.